everybody, welcome back to The Hobby Musician. I am so excited for today's video because today we are taking our very first steps into a brand new era for what we can accomplish here at the channel. Now if you've been watching for a while, you know that we have done all sorts of things like modifications or repairs or even building instruments completely from scratch. Well, that's all fine and fun, and we've learned a lot with DIY tools and DIY techniques, but along the way there have been times where I've really kind of encountered something that I've wanted to do in a more complex level or maybe more intricate kind of builds uh, and designs, and I just haven't been able to do that until now. I've been doing a lot of homework and finding that builders, you know, out there, hobby builders just like you and me, have been able to accomplish some of that with a single device. So what I have finally done after all my homework and research, I have officially purchased my very first combination two-in-one laser cutter and CNC router. Now, before we go any further, you're gonna see, I mean, this is from the company Fox Alien, but I wanna make it clear, I'm not sponsored in any way by that company. Um, but as I did my homework and research, I ended up deciding to go with them because of a lot of the accessories and the, the options that they offer. In doing that homework, I also found out they have an optional affiliate program. So I signed up for that, which allows me to now make direct links uh, to any of these products or accessories, and I'll put them down below this video and any future videos. So if you see something that you think might be, you know, along the lines of what you're working on, you can head down, click into it, and learn so much more about all this stuff. Now, the specific unit that I bought is the Masuder Pro. So what I have planned for today, since it has the options of doing, you know, entirely laser cutting and doing entirely CNC stuff, I'm going to make videos just focused on all those different ones. Today, I want to crack into this. I want to get it assembled. That's step one. And then I want to start investigating the laser cutter first. After I kind of get a handle on that, then we'll switch over and we'll do a series of videos on getting a handle on the CNC. So right now, um, I'm gonna cut over, kind of cut into a time lapse, and we'll get this uh, assembled and put together, and then jump back and start talking about software and you know what I need to do to kind of test this out. I'm also not in a terrible rush to get this done, so as this video goes on, you may see me in different outfits because, you know, I'll just schedule some time over the next few days to really um, leisurely walk into this. Um, I don't want to make any uh, silly mistakes along the way. So first things first, I'm going to crack into this and start to put it together, so I will see you back here in just a second. Okay, everybody, we are back, and as you can see, everything is assembled, so I do need to do a little bit of explaining. I got all my tools out, I got the boxes cut open, and I set up the camera to do a time lapse like I promised you, and I got ready, hit the button, thought that I had started the time lapse, then sat down to assemble it. Two things happened. Number one, apparently my giant fingers, I missed the button. I didn't actually start uh, the video that I thought I did. But then the second thing happened that I realized it actually wasn't that bad. From start to finish, cracking open the box to getting it in the way that you see it right now took no more than 20 minutes. I was not built, I wasn't even assembling it for 15 minutes. Five minutes of it was just pulling it out and unpacking it and getting all the, you know, um, packaging materials off of it. This was so easy to put together. And a big part of that was um, what I discovered, how they have made their user manual. This user manual is mostly instructions on how to assemble it. I could... I couldn't have been more impressed with how simple, like, I mean, if you look at this, it was, you know, pull out the rails, put in four bolts. Now the rails are put together. <laughs> pull out the, you know, the bed, you know, here, the, the support bed, put in four bolts. Now the support bed is together. Everything from the chain with all, even though the, you know, some of these connections I know may look uh, tangled up. All of the wires are together. All of the wires are already fed through the chain. The brackets are already there. The, the uh, control box here with the emergency stop, everything, put in two bolts here, put in four bolts there, and it is done. It literally took 15 minutes of assembly time and this was done. So that's so I do apologize that I don't have the time lapse for you, but honestly, if you're gonna do this yourself, you kind of don't need uh, to watch somebody do it. Their user manual is phenomenal. 
So I want to take you through a couple of the um, optional accessories that I got. So yes, the Masuder Pro is kind of the base model. You can see here kind of the dimensions. It's designed to be sort of a tabletop uh, at home scale uh, machine. So the, the specifically for laser cutting, one of the things I bought was I bought the laser module. They have a pack where you can just, uh, if you buy this as a CNC, you can buy the laser module separately, which is what I did. This is a 40 watt, their 40 watt version. They have a lower one and a higher one. I just went right in the middle. And additionally, the other accessory that I bought specifically for laser cutting is this metal bed. So this is a metal um, bed. It's about a half inch or so tall. And the top of it is made in sort of an edge on honeycomb pattern so that when the laser is cutting through materials, if it gets through the material, it can then pass beyond the bottom of it. And it really does reduce kind of scorching and um, you know singeing of the tops or bottoms of whatever you're cutting. Now, what, what am I cutting? Well, <laughs> along with this, you know, not from the company, I just went to a craft store and I bought um, some of this, just some, you know, craft, uh, I think this is like balsa wood or like just nothing fancy. Um, I bought a pack of this. This stuff is really thin. This is about eighth inch thin wood. And then this, I got a quarter inch. And what I wanted to do is now I'm just going to test. I don't want to start building an instrument until I really know some of the settings. I need to know what kind of power levels I need to be setting, how fast to move this. And I also need to learn some brand new software. Uh, these laser modules work best with kind of, you know, standalone laser cutting software, uh, which I bought along with this. And again, all of this stuff, the modules, everything, you can see links to it down below. So now what I need to do, I am going to make sure that I video this next part, but I'm going to cut over and do a screen capture because I want to load up our um, hobby musician logo. And that's what I want to use as kind of an image to test cutting speeds, engraving speeds, and really kind of dip my toes in how the software works to then translate into uh, cutting out some, some test passes to really get a feel for this uh, brand new laser cutter. So the next thing I'm going to do uh, is move over. We're going to get to a screen capture and I'll kind of show you kind of sped up just a little test how easy it is to get started up and running. And then uh, once I got it, then we're going to head out and actually try to cut some stuff out. So once again, I'll see you back in just a second. everybody we are back from our testing and before we get into it in all honesty uh, it's actually been several days uh, in real time since the last time you and I were talking a few seconds ago just because um, I immediately started to discover things as I was going out and using everything for the first time um, I was starting to find out I was doing something wrong I figured it out and then I wanted to try it again to make sure that I really understood it 
because as we said at the top of the video, this whole experience, um, I want to provide you with the best information I can uh, so that if you're considering getting into this game yourself, you can make a really informed decision. All right, so what, what did the test reveal? Well, I'm going to take you through stepwise what I discovered. As we said, I, I was trying to be really clever. I was going to use our um, YouTube logo to kind of make a grid, and here is the grid that I made. Now you can see here, there, there's a lot of things wrong with it, and two particular areas that I want to cover here is, um, I also, I didn't get the settings quite right. I thought I was going to be real clever. I was going to try to do each row with different power levels. Well, uh, you can do that, but I didn't set it up correctly to do it on this particular one. But what I noticed, the first thing that I noticed was no matter what the power setting was, I started to realize that around the um, images or around the areas of the image where it was engraving, I noticed that I was getting really dark edges but then as it moved towards the middle of the shapes, the, um, you know, the, the density or the darkness of the cut um, kind of went a little lighter. And you can see that. You can see it really well around kind of the circles. You know, on the left and the right side of the circle parts, it's a lot darker. But then you get to the middle and you kind of look and it gets lighter. And as well as around the like rectangular parts of the H's, the edges are super dark and then the middle was a lot lighter. Well, a little bit of searching around told me, or, or I discovered, that there's a feature on here, and this is something that I highly recommend you play with, called overscanning. So essentially what that means is there has to be some side-to-side -side motion or, or up and down, depending on which way it's going. But as the laser is on, the machine is moving, and it's, it's engraving, it's burning, it's cutting the wood. Well, then it gets to the edge of where it needs to stop, and it has to turn off the laser, and then the head itself has to reverse direction. Now, if it tries to do that too quickly, if, if it tries to get to the edge and stop and then go back, um, sometimes just the, the raw time that it spends, the head is slowing down with the laser still on and then speeding up with the laser still on, that actually increases the time that part of the wood is being burned. So there's more time being burned in one area, less time being burned in another area, you're going to get differences in color. So what I did was I upped the overscanning percentage. I went to about a 4% overscan. And what that tells the machine to do is it tells it to keep moving the head even when the laser goes off, laser shuts off, it moves, and then it starts slowing down, stops, changes direction, starts speeding up, and then when it gets back to the edge, the laser comes back on, but now it's moving kind of in the same speed that it was for everything else. So that really helped me kind of figure out uh, that particular part of, of this. The second thing that I figured out has to do with the, um, the outlines. I wanted to try to cut out these little things, make little medallions or coins or something like that. But you can see on this row, uh, there's basically nothing. There, there's no outline. And you can start to see it gets it, a little bit more outline on the second and third. And then I can barely take my, my fingernail and I can kind of get my fingernail into this um, last one. Well, that's just cutting mode. So I, I was starting to learn like, what are the settings that you need to cut through something? The biggest tip that I have for you, and the thing that I learned very quickly, was that it's very, very material dependent. As we said earlier, um, this was like eighth inch uh, balsa wood, like the, the flimsiest stuff you can possibly get. Well, I discovered that with my laser module and with the speeds that I was kind of making that head move, um, I was going to need, if you go really fast, you're going to need to kind of have to do multiple passes because the laser just doesn't have enough time to burn through, you know, whatever thickness. Now, if you get another material that's thicker than this, you're going to have to change your settings. Maybe you have to do more passes uh, over the same shape to get it to cut all the way through. Or the other thing I experimented with was slowing down the laser. If you slow down the machine but leave the laser at the same power, you can kind of achieve the same effect because it has more time to do the cutting that you want. 
So those were the two main things, the overscanning uh, and then the number of passes. So from here, like I said, I learned uh, and then I, I went again. Uh, I got out a new piece of balsa wood and then this is what um, I ended up with. Now I'll put some, some uh, blown up pictures up here so you can see. So I changed the overscanning to, as I said before, my, my setting, I've got it at 4%. You can see here, um, it is perfectly uniform. All of the, the shading in anything, even in the circle part, in the, the logos, the rectangular parts of the logos, all the shading came out great. And then I did experiment. I have other ones um, that I'm not showing right now. I experimented with just longer times and it didn't matter what the setting was. Now with this over scanning problem fixed, I could have light engravings, dark engravings, whatever my heart desires. Uh, and I was getting uniform uh, all the way around. The second thing that you'll notice, this is now a clean cut. It's a clean cut circle. Um, so again, I was playing with the number of, of um, passes going over that. Uh, honestly, another tip for you is I just set the laser to 100%. So full power, um, and then I was able, I think this one, with the speed that I was going, I had about um, three passes, about three passes to go around. And then I noticed kind of, you can see through, when you have your safety glasses on, you could see that after that third pass, underneath that metal honeycomb plate, you could see like reflected light. So you knew that the laser was getting all the way through it. Okay, so that took, you know, a couple days and a lot of scrap pieces of wood to get there. Then what I did the last day before coming back to you is I started going crazy. So I went back to the craft store and I got um, thicker uh, wood. So this is about quarter inch. Um, I still think it's like balsa or plywood or something. It's not, it's not um, you know, high quality wood, but it was thicker. I wanted to play with that and I went crazy with the engraving times. You can see here, like not only can I get my, my um, fingernail in there, like this, these examples, I was just making things bigger, smaller, seeing how, how sharp, you know, the, the lines could be. But by the end, I was able to get like eight inch cuts down into this which now opens up possibilities. I can come back with some like epoxy resins and mix in those cool colors that you see a lot of builders doing on YouTube and then pour, you know, this is deep enough. I could pour in resin, let it set, sand it off and have cool kind of inlays. Or for that matter, I could go and get different toned wood, like a darker tone, like a, um, you know, dark ebony or something like that. And then um, cut out those for the exact shapes that I have here, put some glue down in there and then fit those in and make wooden inlays or whatever kind of other creative things you can come up with. So at the end of this, I did really come away with just after a few sessions over a few days with this real kind of bird's eye picture of everything this laser software and this laser you know, unit can do. Um, and I gotta say, I'm really excited to now move over to the CNC part of this and see what all kinds of uh, interesting things that has in store for me. So as we said, once again, here at the end, just like we started the video, if you're interested in checking out any of this stuff too, don't forget, you can go down below this video and check them out through the affiliate links that we've got down there. In addition, you can also check out just some of the other gear we use here on the channel. The guitars I use, the, the modelers I use to play and um, gig out and those kind of things. So I really hope you got something out of this video. And if there's other features you want to see us do or uh, make a tutorial about, head down into the comments, let us know, and we'd be happy to put that up for you. So as always here at the end, thank you for watching. And until next time, play on my friends, play on.